Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review we are looking at the Play Arts Kai Batman Timeless Steampunk, which is the Steampunk Batman in other words. Uh, very cool packaging art, so if you're into that kind of thing, that's what it looks like. He comes with the standard Play Arts Kai display stand. I'm not going to bother showing you that because we've seen like a million of them by now. So let's just start talking about the figure because that's what we're all here for. He is very hefty, very heavy figure. He probably weighs two pounds at least, and he measures almost 11 inches tall to the top of his ears, which makes him uh, about 27 centimeters. Very cool figure. He is just loaded with detail. Lots and lots of detail. You can see throughout his chest, there's a translucent piece with gears inside, paintwork, sculpt work, just about everywhere. His face, he has that little monocle thing going on. Very cool looking, very steampunky. You can see like rust spots throughout the armor. Very cool looking, very, uh, very steampunky. And I'm not even a steampunk fan. And this is really cool looking to me. So, uh, that's what the figure looks like. We're going to go through that in a little more detail. Let's look at the accessories though. First comes with this crossbow, which I guess is supposed to be like his grapnel gun. It's got the uh, little gas canisters around it. So it looks definitely steam or compressed gas powered. So that's kind of cool. Nice details, looks pretty cool. We have an interchangeable hand meant for holding that. Lots of nice detail in that piece. Then we have two relaxed hands. So not the most accessories out of all the figures, but he more than makes up for the amount of plastic and accessories with the amount of plastic in his actual body. It is, like I said, very heavy, and there's a whole lot going on, especially once we get to the cape. So let's just go through the articulation really quickly. The head is on a double ball peg. The neck is also on a double ball peg. So very classic design for the Play Arts figures. A little bit limited though because that collar is awfully high and it, do it, it does limit the head pretty significantly. And once you turn the head, his mouth ends up going behind the collar. So that's not the best design in the world like that. You can't really turn the head. The collar doesn't move. I mean, it's soft, but it's not going to get out of the way. So that's a bit of a bummer. These things are articulated, but uh, only right here. So they're, they're going to move, but they don't really do anything. So not the best design in the world. They look kind of cool, but they are definitely not well implemented. The shoulder pads have a little tiny ball hinge where they connect to the torso, which is okay. It's definitely not a horrible design, but it's definitely not a good design. Uh, having the shoulder pads connected to the torso means it's going to look weird when posing this figure. Um, anytime you move the arms, really, the shoulder pads are going to probably look out of place unless you go straight out to the side. For the arms, we have the uh, butterfly joint, which is humongous. And I don't know how I feel about that. It goes all the way back to there, which is more like the classic uh, butterfly design, uh, but it does leave a big gap. So I don't know. It's not bad. The shoulder pad is connected to the butterfly, so that's a good thing. And then the arm itself is connected to the butterfly with your classic ball hinge. So you're going to have not really any trouble posing the arm. It's just going to be a little awkward to get that shoulder pad to look good. And it's really bulky. So uh, I have a feeling this figure is going to be one of those where it ends up just standing on the shelf in a pretty static display, which is disappointing. We do get our bicep swivel out of that, but out of that ball hinge. No, uh, oh, you know what? It's just stuck. So we get the bicep swivel at the ball hinge. You can see in there, hopefully the ball hinge itself. And then the shoulder is a separate piece, but that gives you a pretty big gap where the arm is actually connected to the figure. That's a little disappointing. I think doesn't look that great. You do have your standard ball hinge for the elbow that also swivels around. Cool design for the gauntlet, I think. Um, maybe they did a little bit too much with this. I'm not sure. I feel kind of like they threw everything on this figure and it ended up not being that useful. Standard ball hinge for the wrist. The torso joint is weird. I'm not entirely sure exactly how it works, to be honest. I think it's just a hinge. Or maybe it's a hinge with the ball peg, but the ball peg's stuck. It, it's very odd. And he's super heavy in the back, so it's good that it's ratcheted the way it is. Hopefully you can hear that, but it's still not strong enough. So I don't know. The torso is kind of limited, it seems. And he still wants to fall back on it. He does have the floating crotch piece with the standard Player Kai hips. So that's fine. And you can bring them all the way out to the side, no problem. You can bring them pretty far forward, despite the amount of junk around his waist. 
and you get your thigh swivel around there. And it doesn't look too bad. I mean, as far as a floating crotch piece goes, it hides everything pretty well. It doesn't have like the big diaper effect, but it's still really cumbersome. Um, do we get a thigh swivel any lower? We do not. Double jointed knee. Uh, doesn't really want to go, but once you make it go, it's all right. It's not the best looking knee joint in the world, but it looks okay. They kind of hit it with some gears and things, but it still looks kind of ugly. And then for the ankles, we have our classic ball hinge ankle. So you're going to have to put some work into it to get it to pose right, especially since they added this thing on the ankle, which looks cool, but once you try to do an ankle rocker pose, that's going to be a problem. It's going to get in the way. So cool concept, execution and practicality, probably not the best. Now, as for the capes, this whole piece is static. You can't move that. So that's disappointing. That's going to really limit what you can do as far as posing the cape. You do get your ball hinge for each of these pieces, just like you would expect out of any Play Arts Kai Batman cape. And then connected to those cape pieces, you get another ball hinge with another cape piece, which is cool in concept, but again, it's super heavy and you can't really pose it that well due to all of the stuff that's back there. So that's a little bit of a problem. And then lastly, we have another cape piece connected with the ball hinge down here. So you have five total cape pieces, which is cool, but very difficult to pose, very cumbersome. And like I said, it, it, it's borderline too much going on. You guys thought the, uh, the Tetsuya Nomura Batman had too much going on. This one has uh, even more, and it makes me a little hesitant about this whole Batman line. I feel like they took a cool idea and just went way too far with it. The cats are going nuts over here. Hope you, hopefully you guys don't hear that. Uh, it's a cool idea. I just don't know if I feel like it was executed well. I feel kind of like they just went overboard and it doesn't look that good. So, I don't know. I'm a little bit torn on this one. Maybe once I get in some poses, it'll be good. But as of right now, I'm like 50% liking it, 50% not liking it. So, you guys are going to have to use that information to determine what you think about the figure. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.